Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. It's April 8th, 2010, and Apple had a little media event today to show you seven of the new features that are coming to iPhone OS 4.0. Now, they actually said that there's going to be over a hundred new features, but in their little media event, they covered seven critical features that the next version is going to have. Now, some of them aren't as big as the other ones, but let's start off with the biggest of them all multitasking. In the past, Apple has been hesitant to implement multitasking because they say it drains the battery, which is true, and it also makes the foreground application run more sluggishly because system resources are being used for the apps in the background, both of which are true. However, Apple says they have developed a new way to do this that takes that eliminates those issues. So, basically what they've done is they've implemented seven multitasking services in the form of APIs that includes background audio so something like Pandora and what's actually cool about Pandora is you could be running it lock your phone when you unlock the phone you'll actually be able to control Pandora with a slider that's an, a tool that the developers can use voice over IP so you could use Skype in the background um, so if somebody called you you know you could be doing whatever you want texting browsing the web or whatever somebody calls your Skype a little notification will come up and ask you to answer it if you want to. Background location. So if you have an app like a GPS app like TomTom Tom or whatever, it could be using the GPS in the background. Or if you have less intensive applications, it could be using cell towers in the background to give you a more general location. There's an also push notifications uh, that are improved as well as local notifications so the apps don't have to use the server, they can do it locally to push notifications. Task completion, so let's say you're uploading something to Flickr or using the YouTube app to upload something to YouTube. If you've ever noticed, if you exit out, it doesn't work, the upload fails. Or if the screen locks, the upload fails for YouTube. So now you can do that in the background, as well as fast app switching. So that's basically apps save their state and stop running, and then when you reopen the app, bam, it resumes. And what's actually really cool about how they implemented this, you double click the home button and a little window overlay, sort of like a dock, comes up about on the bottom part of the screen and it shows you all the open applications that you have. So you could be writing an email, double click, go to Safari, double click, jump into MLB at bat, or whatever the case may be, and do that. The second big improvement is folders. Now we, again, we, this is a feature that people with jailbroken devices have had, but basically what you can do is you hold down an app like you were going to move it, and you can actually drag them on top of each other, and that'll create a folder. It will automatically be named the category of application, but then you can just adjust the name to whatever you want. They've also improved the email application. Now you have a unified inbox for all your different mail accounts as well as you can have multiple exchange accounts so in the past uh, one of the ways to get push email to work with gmail is to set it up as an exchange account but then if you had another exchange email it was a mess now you can use as many exchange accounts as you want you can organize by threads um, and you can also have fast inbox switching so if you only want to look at one inbox your work inbox not your personal because you don't want to get distracted you can do that and also you can open attachments in applications that you download from the App Store so you're not limited to just viewing a Word document preview. Next up is iBooks for iPhone. We have it on the iPad, it's coming to the iPhone. Not a big feature here, not a big upgrade, but it's going to be coming to the iPhone. You can buy once wirelessly your books, your content, your pages, uh, so what page you're reading and bookmarks will all be synchronized uh, wirelessly, which is nice. Apple is also trying to improve the enterprise market because if you get business users, that's why BlackBerry has such a commanding market share. They have the business users. So they're increasing their uh, data protection services for iPhone. Other features include wireless app distribution, SSL VPN, and mobile device management. So basically you could have in your command center at your office, you could have you could see all your fleet of iPhones that you have given. You could pump down the new company application. You could manage the devices remotely. If someone's device were to get stolen, you can wipe it clean and lock it down so no so the thief couldn't use it. And it's really a great thing and this will really get it adopted more in the professional environment, which is critical for them to get the success that they're really aiming for with iPhone. Next up is Game Center. This is basically an Xbox Live-esque feature for iPhone. There are over 50,000 games in the iPhone App Store. So what they want to do is create a social gaming network for the iPhone. Again, this will be called Game Center. This is a surprise because nobody really, there was no speculation about this. Nobody saw this coming. It includes achievements, leaderboards, matchmaking. So basically, again, I said Xbox Live in the past. It's not that you're going to be able to connect to Xbox Live, just to clarify. 
but it'll be basically an Xbox Live service, a PSN service, that you can track uh, your achievements and compare them to other users, and just a more unified approach. We've seen this in some specific applications and specific games, but now you have a unified approach for all the games you play and how you rate and rank against other people. And finally, the big thing for developers, I add mobile advertising. Basically, there's a lot of applications that are free and reasonably priced in the App Store, and developers aren't making as much money as they could. Now, instead of just increasing the prices and decreasing the amount of free apps that you have available, Apple is releasing a service that allows a more interactive and creative way of advertising. Their focus is on interactive and emotional advertisements. So basically, they gave a demo of uh, Toy Story 3. Basically, it's almost like a separate app. The ad will pop up whenever the developer tells them to. So every three, every three minutes, every five minutes, every ten minutes, after whatever event you want. And it's almost like a separate app. So this Toy Story thing came out. You could see little videos. There's little games. You could buy this Toy Story app right from the ad inside of the original app that you were in. So it's really immersive. And this is going to be really easy. Apple says that you can implement this in an afternoon. So it should be really quick and really simple to implement this into your existing applications. And basically, everything is going to be done for you. You, you design the ad, and then Apple will host it and sell it with a 60-40 split, 60 for the dev, 40 for Apple in terms of revenue. So it's a really nice thing and, you know, you, you, it's basically almost free revenue because besides the fact that current mobile advertising isn't very good, even if you had it, it wasn't very profitable um, and a lot of people didn't have it at all. So to go from zero to whatever revenue you get, it's substantial. You're basically tapping in an advertising or a revenue stream that you haven't been using in the past. And what's also really cool about these advertisements, they can actually access the APIs that developers have access to for regular applications. So one example for Toy Story is you could show a map of your local theaters grabbing GPS data and then you could buy tickets right from the app, right from the advertisement. So that's really cool and I think this is really going to revolutionize mobile advertising and it's really going to help developers out. So in summation, iPhone OS 4.0 is going to help developers with better advertising. You can multitask, you can organize your stuff with folders, and there's a hundred other features that you can check out via Apple's website. Now when is this going to be launching? Summer 2010 is when it's going to be launching for iPhone and iPod Touch users. Fall for iPad users. But I'd just like to clarify, iPhone 3GS and iPod Touch 3rd generation will be getting all the features I've mentioned. Previous versions of both the iPhone and iPod Touch will still get iPhone operating system 4.0, but they won't get all the same features. For instance, multitasking is a no-go for older generation products. So that's kind of a bummer, but for people with newer products and for the eventual new iPod Touch and new iPhone, this is going to be a substantial upgrade and will really keep Apple competitive to the likes of WebOS and Android. Again, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. If you'd like content like this, Check out the HD videos at youtube.com slash the revived one. What's your favorite feature in iPhone OS 4.0? I'd like to hear in the comments below. Have a good day.